Do you have a rock star one page resume with solid project portfolio and you are still not getting interview calls for a data science profile? Maybe you're going from one website to another hitting that apply button and you feel like your resume is going into this black hole and you don't hear any response back. In this video, we are going to talk about a unique technique called cold emailing, which many people don't know about. And even if they don't know about it, they are not trying it. And we have a special guest today, Nick Singh. Nick is an author of Ace the Data Science Interview book. He has a platform called Data Lemur, which helps you practice SQL interview questions. He worked with Google and Facebook before, pretty solid experience. And he has more than 90,000 followers on his LinkedIn who listens to his advice on cracking data science interviews. So let's get started and talk about this unique technique called cold emailing. All right, Nick, so what exactly is cold emailing and why does it work? Cold emailing is when you reach out to a hiring manager or recruiter that you don't know, that you've never talked to before, usually over email, but this also works on Twitter or LinkedIn DMs, where you pitch yourself in about 50, 100, maybe 125 words and try to convince them to give you an interview or at least meet up for a networking coffee chat. Okay. And how do you find the emails of these people who, whom you want to reach out to? That's a whole process, but um, one of the best ways is actually you can guess at smaller companies. <laughs> Usually the name of their CEO is going to be CEO name at company name, or you can guess, you know, first name dot last name. And worst case, the email bounces, right? And you can always mo try multiple ones by mm. adding the emails in the CC line. So usually it's not too bad. And there are other free Chrome extensions like Clearbit that help you discover email addresses. So overall, emails are a lot more accessible than you would think. And in the end, if you can't find your email, all the techniques we're going to talk about really work well on a LinkedIn DM or Twitter DM as well. Got it. Now, do you want to talk about the success that you have had in your life uh, through cold emailing? Yeah, I actually got my last full-time job at SafeGraph, a geospatial data startup, by cold emailing the CEO. In fact, I didn't know their email, so I literally did first name at company name and first name dot last name at company name. I literally did that. And within 24 hours, the CEO responded back saying, hey, I like your experience, you know, and let's set up an interview. And then two weeks later, I did my on-site. And then two more weeks later, I'd started. And that's actually the story of how I left Facebook for that startup called SafeGraph. That's really amazing. All right. So now in the next portion of this video, we are going to play the six tips that Nick uh, is going to talk about in detail. And he's going to, I think, show some of the email templates as well. So make sure you watch it carefully. And at the end, if you have any question, post in our comment box below. This egg represents the six cold email rules you've got to follow. Break these rules and you'll end up with egg on your face. But stick to the rules and you can be successful like me. And the time I sent this cold email that landed me an interview at Airbnb or the time I sent this cold email and got my job at SafeGraph. First up, realize that the hiring managers and recruiters we're cold emailing are busy. So just like your resumes, the first rule of writing a killer cold email is to keep your email short and sweet. The team over at HubSpot analyzed 40 million cold emails to figure out what's the ideal length and found that cold emails between 50 and 125 words perform the best. Curious what that looks like in practice? Pretend you're applying for this data science job at PayPal. Here's a bare bones 50 word cold email that could potentially work. But this 100 word version is more my style because it explains three concrete bullet point reasons for why you're a good fit for the job. Now here's a longer version clocking in at 150 words where I start by relating personally to the Berkeley alum and expand on my previous bullet points. But y'all, this is the upper limit. Keep the length of your cold emails under 150 words. Long or short though, no one's gonna read your cold email if nobody opens it. That's why the second rule of cold emails is to always have a strong subject line so that we can hook them into clicking the email and learning more. So don't be afraid to mention the big name companies you work for or the prestigious universities you attended in the subject line. Like when I was looking for full-time jobs, my subject line was former Google and Microsoft intern looking for full-time positions at company X. And yes, this is kind of awkward because most of us aren't used to flexing like that. Unless you're tech lead, an ex-Google, ex-Facebook millionaire. Hate to say, whether it's for YouTube or cold email, shouting out Fang gets you clicks. But even without name dropping Fang, you can 
still show you're clickworthy by highlighting what you studied, what your GPA was, your relevant portfolio project, or some big achievement. You don't need Fang to have a great email subject line. But speaking of flexing, the third cold email rule you can't break is to mention an accomplishment or two in the cold email itself. You gotta show them why you're important and relevant. Just like with the subject line, this is not the time to be shy. Like Rambo, you gotta come out guns blazing and hit them with that one, two big reasons for why you deserve a response. To further play up your accomplishments, include an image, GIF, or link to your work to prove you achieved what you did. So for example, say you're looking for a data analyst job at Instacart and made a super cool Tableau dashboard. Screenshot and link to the damn thing. And if you don't have any accomplishments or portfolio projects to share, go watch my past videos on creating kick-ass portfolio projects and get to work so that you got something of merit to actually reach out with. Because ultimately, cold emailing isn't some black magic. Without substance in the first place, cold emailing is a waste of time. But if you do got substance and you combine it with the fourth rule, which is to relate personally to the hiring manager recruiter, you're really gonna set yourself apart. Just go on LinkedIn and look for similarities. If both of y'all graduated from Michigan, drop a go blue in the email. Y'all both happen to be in Chi Omega or Alpha Phi or Sigma Ligma? Lead with that. You're transitioning from biology or life sciences into data. And the hiring manager you're cold emailing happened to study public health? Mention the coincidence. I swear these extra five minutes spent personalizing the cold email have massive ROI because they show the recipient this isn't some spam email. This is genuine and thoughtful outreach. Plus people love helping others who are like them. So emphasize the commonalities. So to recap, now that they opened your email, read the whole thing because it's short, think you're kind of legit and like you personally, follow the fifth cold email rule, have a specific ask. When I worked at Facebook, I hated getting weak ass cold emails saying, I'd love to set up a time to learn more about working at Facebook. Like, bro, that's what Google's for. Look it up. And it's fucking Facebook. Facebook's teams to work together and bounce ideas off one another. Like, what do you want me to say? It's sick as hell. Like, what do you want me to tell you? So at the end of your email, you gotta be bold. Ask for that referral. Ask to start that interview process for a specific position. Now, if you're asking for an informational interview, just to start a relationship, Please include two well-researched specific questions in the body of the email. Like when I worked at geospatial analytics startup Safecraft, you shouldn't have hit me up with that generic, how do you like working at Safecraft bullshit. Instead, you could have asked me about the bottlenecks in scaling up our data for good COVID-19 initiative, or asked me about the data challenges when it came to cleaning and normalizing petabytes of consumer transaction data. Point is, be specific in your questions and your asks. Don't beat around the bush. Ain't nobody got time for that. Speaking of time, the sixth cold email rule you gotta follow is to establish a time timeline, add urgency. This isn't some open ask, there's a deadline. So when you ask for that informational interview, mention that it should be early next week. If you're far along in the recruiting process with a few other companies, tactfully mention your timeline to speed up the process. Yes, it's gutsy to name drop a company, but it induces FOMO, it works. For example, if your dream is to work at Tesla on their autopilot self-driving team, but you've already got an offer from Microsoft with a deadline, start your cold email with how genuine your interest in Tesla is, name drop Microsoft so Tesla knows you're legit and has FOMO, then add some urgency to your specific ask to start the interview process. The best part is you don't even need an offer in hand to make this tactic work. Even having an on-site interview scheduled at a name brand company or competitor can sometimes be enough to induce FOMO and act as social proof to get you an interview and have the process get expedited. I guarantee if you don't break these six cold email rules and you master the art of the follow-up, you'll become a cold email fiend and land your dream job. Thank you.